he here, the wicked are fleeing, even though the, no man pursues, because they they're, have no peace, right? The wicked have no peace. They're, they're always in, uh, maybe some aren't guilty and if not feeling guilty and if they're not, if they're not feeling guilty, then they're completely lost because that is the uh, sin against the Holy Spirit, unpardonable sin. Um, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And I want to talk a little bit about that boldness this evening that we all need to have. And we all need to be walking in. Um, and what do you think gives us that boldness? Anybody have any idea of some of the things that give us that boldness? Well, the Holy Spirit and knowing that we're robed with the righteousness of the robe of Christ. Um, so I think the boldness comes when we're guilt free and able to stand without condemnation. Absolutely. That is absolutely one of the reasons. Thank you, April. April. Um, you actually covered a couple of them there. Um, anybody else have an answer to that? I, I think, was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. ahead. Okay. okay, that's yeah. like, see, so um, I, I'm gonna start with faith faith in the things that we cannot see um, makes me bold for myself sometimes. Well, you know, I'm working on it and trying to, I'm trying to get away from the word trying, but boldness, I think <laughs> that, yes. So faith, you know, for the things that I cannot see yet, but yet I pray over it and I pray and I believe in my heart. You know, um, I ask God, allow, like today, that was, that was my prayer. Allow me to be in bold in your name, Jesus, because no matter what comes my way, you know, I'll, I'll die for Jesus, basically. But I need you, Father, to show me, you know, show me that I am bold throughout the circumstances as, you know, being courageous for the things I have not yet seen, you know, in the circumstances or whatever we face during the day. In other words, whatever comes my way, I will respond in Jesus' name and become bold and bold and grow within my heart so it can be aligned in alignment into what he wants us to be in alignment with him in obedience basically thank you that is that is a good one faith helps faith. us to have boldness what were you gonna say venus um i was gonna say the experience that we have with god i feel like i feel like just for being reminded of the things that he's brought us through and how he's carried us through the most difficult things in our lives. For me, I feel like I can go back to remember his faithfulness. And as I remember his faithfulness, that's kind of like an altar in my mind and in my heart that I have. So when I go to God and ask him for what I need, I know that he's faithful to fulfill it because he's done it then. So I know he can do it again. So that kind of gives me boldness when I come to the throne. And it's, there's actually a verse that says, that we shall come to the throne of grace with boldness and confidence because we know and we trust God's character. I think it's it's more so of knowing his character and trusting that he's faithful to follow through. That's right. That is very good, Venus. You guys are hitting all of the key things. That is good. Um, so yes, you've pulled out some of the things and I'm gonna go over some of those verses um, next, but you said the Holy Spirit, faith, relationship, experience, you know, um, you, you hit on identity, April. So yes, all of those things are what create a boldness in us and a confidence in us. Um, Romans 12, two says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of, of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And that is by reading his word. So it transforms us. It's one of the ways that we can, we start growing in that boldness is by the transformation of being in his word. The word is life. Um, if we believe in it and it transforms us into these bold people for God that he needs us to be. Um, the next verse is, and I'm going to just read all of these for you, Ephesians 3.12, which says, 
because of Christ and our faith in him, which you were talking about, Sonia, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that we have not seen, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. So because of what he did for us on the cross and our faith in that, belief in that, that opens up the way to come boldly to him. Because um, we, before we weren't actually able to do that, we um, had that veil and only the high priest could um, go into the most holy of holy places um, and put that offering for us. Um, but his death on the cross tore that veil and now we can come to him, come to him directly um, with boldness because of what he did for us. Um, and then so Acts 4.13. Now, when the men of the Sanhedrin, which is a Jewish high court, saw the confidence and the boldness of Peter and John and grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained or ordinary men, they were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus which equals relationship, which equals experience, just like you said, Venus. Um, so yes, as we grow in relationship and experiential knowledge with him because of the things that he does in our life, that makes us more bold. Um, and then Roman or Acts 4, 29 through 31. And I've mentioned this before, but I pray this verse before and I prayed it, uh, I've been praying it for quite some time now, and my other Bible that I used to have, it used to open just, I would open my Bible, and it would open to this verse, but it's, oh, now, uh, and now, oh, Lord, hear their threats, and give it to me, your servant, great boldness in preaching your word, and stretch forth your hand with healing power, that miraculous signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And then after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. So there's the Holy Spirit aspect of it. When, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we cannot help but speak God's word with boldness. It just flows through us. It's not even us, you know, it comes out with boldness because we are filled with his holy fire. And it changes us how we come forward. And we can be asking for that every day, a fresh fire of his spirit every single day, a fresh anointing of his oil every single day, that riving, that, that riving, new word alert, um, that um, living water that <laughs> flows out of your belly, you know, we can ask for a fresh anointing at that daily and, and walk in that daily. Um, so then Hebrews 10, 11 through 23, there's quite a bit in this one, but it was very important that I felt to bring this out. Um, so under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day. We talked about this a little bit already offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away our sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. We, he made us perfect. Okay, and the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so, for he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord, and I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. So April brought this up about being blameless. You know that you're blameless. You know that you're forgiven. You know that it's forgotten. Okay, this makes us bold. Because now we have an identity. We know who we are. Um, that we are kingdom. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can come boldly. We can boldly enter into heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. So because of the blood of Jesus, what he did at the cross, we can enter boldly. 
by his death. So by his death and by his blood, we were given um, bold access to him directly. Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the whole, most holy place. This is another reason right here that if you guys aren't taking communion regularly, I would recommend it um, to take communion more often. You know, more than I don't know how often you do it. You, this is something you can do in your home alone with him. It doesn't have to be administered by a minister. It says, whenever you do it, um, do it in remembrance of what I did for you and how important it is, what, how often it is that he did that for you. Um, Excuse me. That, yeah, go right ahead. Could you please give me the um, last verses that you read? I didn't catch what book. That's, it was Hebrews, and I'm reading uh, Hebrews 10, 11 through 23. I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome. Um, so yes, I would suggest doing communion more often. It's a, it's a time to, to, to get with Jesus and to, um, honor him, honor what he did for you and just have that relational time with him. Um, I did the communion daily for a month, 30 days. And yes. it, it was actually a book. I went through and it was communion uh, for 30 days. And then um, he pulled out the scriptures of communion each time, like a little devotional, but I made my own communion bread and um, yeah, I'm going to do that again. Cause it was, I was just so close. It seemed like so much more intimate with um, Jesus. So thank you for reminding me. Yes. That's exactly what it does. That is a good word. April builds intimacy with him because you're honoring him for what he so um hello asminya hello glad you're here um so let's see and since we have a great high priest verse 21 uh, who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. There's that boldness. For our guilty conscience has been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise, so we believe him. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And to let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Paul said that, uh, you know, many, 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 many years ago, if, 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 if it was drawing near then, oh my goodness, how close are we now, right? And he was saying at the time, don't neglect coming together like we're doing now how essential that is to come together as God's people um, and study his word and lift each other up and support each other um, and edify each other and build each other up in the faith. And he's saying, don't forget, don't neglect that. It's, it's essential. And of course, we talked about that. Satan is always and forever trying to pull us apart, isolate us so that we're not ever, that we don't ever meet in person. So that's some of the things that um, builds our confidence and our boldness and something we should be leaning into always, understanding who we are in Christ and what the spirit does for us and what his blood has done for us and what and believing in it that we can now have bold access to him because our sin, we're blameless before him because of what he did on the cross for us and made perfect, which is said in Hebrews chapter 10. So helps us to be able to come to him boldly.